Hey everyone on the other side of the internet. How's it going? This is Kelly from Nice Lady Productions. Thank you for joining me for this review of the Takina 25 to 75 millimeter T 2.9 lens. This is the third lens in a trilogy of lenses that covers the super 35 millimeter sensor. If you've followed my reviews over the years, you know that I have reviewed a lot of Dakina Cinema lenses. I've reviewed their Vista series, one of their Vista zooms, and I've done a really in-depth review on the Dakina 11-20 and 50-135 to 135 lens, and that's all in one long review. So I'm going to take you through the features of the lens. I'm going to show you lots of footage examples. We're going to look at the sharpness of the lens. We're going to look at the lens design, focus breathing, bokeh and lens flare. So let's jump right in. The build quality and style of the lens is very similar to the other two lenses in this series. The difference being that they've added their logo to the side of it as well as the name Dakina Cinema stamped on the side. The lens is available in four mounts, Canon EF, Micro Four Thirds, PL, and Sony E. It has three sets of teeth for a follow focus. You can rack the iris, the zoom, or the focus. Focus rotation is a nice 300 millimeters. The markings on the lens are in two colors, one for the operator and one for the focus puller. If you want to rack the iris, the aperture dial has a break in it, so you would put your follow focus on one side of it, and it can rack between a T2.9 and a T22. You definitely want to incorporate lens support if you're working with a lens that is heavy like this one is, especially with these newer cameras that are so small. The lens itself has a spot for mounting lens support, but I'm using one that just uses a rubber feet and it's a small rig one along with a follow focus. The follow focus I'm using in this review is a small rig follow focus. It has a nice tactile kind of rubbery feel and it's cheap and cheerful and a really nice follow focus that comes with two different gear sizes. The lens is 6.8 inches, which is longer than the other lenses in this series. The weight of the lens ranges depending on the mount you have. So something to consider when you're throwing lenses on a gimbal and something to consider if you're just going strictly handheld and you have a small camera body without big batteries in the back to weigh it down. All the lenses in the Super 35mm series of zooms have a 95mm front diameter so you can easily connect a matte box like this Bright Tangerine Misfit Atom that I have with a little 95 millimeter donut. And they all come with an 86 millimeter filter thread. So it's matched if you want to put in a variable ND or some other filter and attach it to the front. Fit and finish is excellent like their other lenses. All the footage in this review was shot on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro and it's shot at 4K. Now I was able to take this lens out for a documentary that I'm shooting about an all-female boxing tournament. And so this footage was shot on the Red Komodo at 6K. There's a lot to love about the focal length of this zoom lens. The range is between 25 and 75 millimeter. I could see someone buying this lens specifically for the focal length. It is a cinema lens. And what you get with that is a par focal design. So when you zoom in and you are focused on one end of the spectrum, you're going to maintain that focus throughout the zoom range. And this is super important, particularly I found with documentary filmmaking, and you want to catch wide and then zoom in and catch some details. And you don't want to lose that focus throughout the zoom range. So you have 25 millimeter at a wide end. And then as we zoom in, we can get to that nice edge of telephoto land. And in the middle, we have a portrait style of lens. So let's look at a portrait, a portrait of a very old pug. Why do I like the Dakina cinema lenses? To me, they're a perfect combination of a modern lens mixed with sort of a vintage vibe of a lens. They're not too clinical looking. And at the same time, they're not too vintage. They're just kind of a perfect combination of the two. Let's look at sharpness. I'd say there's three main things that impact sharpness. One is the design of a lens. The other is the operator, the camera operator, and how good they are at nailing focus. And the third I would say is just the exposure of the image. If something is overexposed or if there's not a lot of contrast, it can come across as not very sharp. 
one of the hallmarks of this lens being built in a modern age is that hopefully it has reduced focus breathing. So let's look at an example of this. We're going to go from the headlight of my Dodge truck to my motorcycle. And as I rack focus between the two, I shouldn't see the image grow or shrink. And this is like such a great example of how great this lens is. And when we go from my motorcycle to my headlight at 75 millimeters, we're seeing how great this lens operates. Unlike some other lenses on the market, at T2.9, this lens is sharp. So um, you can see here in this image, using my focusing tools, the flower in the bottom right is what I'm focusing on for sharpness. And you can see that it is sharp at T2.9. So this is a usable image. And the bokeh, that fall off, is just gorgeous. There's not really anything I don't like about this lens. You can tell Takina really thought about how to make this a great lens. It's sharp all the way through. It has a great focal length of 25 to 75 millimeters. It is parfocal. It has almost zero focus breathing. And the build quality is fantastic. This is a great lens. And if you're going to own one Takina cinema lens and you shoot on super 35 millimeter cameras, buy this lens. You can't ask for much more. Thanks for sticking with me through to the end of the review and for sharing your comments, your likes, your dislikes. I hope you'll join me for my next review. Take care of yourselves.